Okay, so right now, y'all, we are doing, we are on set for another job. Um, today, we're instead of using Nanlite, we're using, I'm sorry, instead of using Aperture, we're using Nanlite today. But let me kind of go over the cameras that we're using today and then like the overall setup, just so you all know kind of like what to expect and how you can set up your next interviews, right? So here, we'll start with this angle here. This is on an FX30. Uh, this is kind of like my creative angle, right? I'm not, you know, like just to give me something different. Two angles is usually more than enough, but if I have multiple cameras, why not use them? So this one here is gonna kind of like point downwards at them. Uh, we're gonna 35, we're gonna shoot an F2.8. I don't need the, the, the depth of field to be like super crazy, just enough. Um, plus, I need to be able to control the lighting and at 1.8 it was a little bit, just a little bit too bright. Even when we bring it down to Cine EI. Uh, and also all cameras we're using DCI 4K. All right, so all these are shooting straight 24p to match with the Blackmagic uh, Arts 12K. So that is the C angle. B angle, we are on an 85 with the FX3. Um, this angle, and come around here, I wanna show them how that's gonna look. So this angle here, as y'all can see on this monitor, I forgot my Sony MPF battery. So like that's, we could put a monitor on there, I forgot. My bad OC. But nonetheless, this is gonna be my B angle, uh, tight 85 compression, we at F3.2. Uh, I might go to 1.8 if I got some room, because I really want that to, uh, I want that to be a tight shot. I want shots to be able to feel that emotion, feel that compassion for who's, who's ever speaking. Now, on this one here, this baby, this is the Ursa 12K. We are on the DZO Vespits. Uh, we are on the 40 mil. I do have a 21, all right? I do have a 21. Uh, 21 was just a little bit too wide, just a little bit too wide. So we doing, we going to 40, which is the equivalent of like a 60, for real, for real. So if I need to back up, I can, um, but I love this Ursa. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. We are shooting, today we're gonna be shooting this in, we're gonna shoot in 8K, but we shooting at a compression of 12 to one. So if I do wanna crop in, I got room, and 12 to one is fine. I don't need the compression to be, you know, I, 12 to one is fine, y'all. Y'all don't need y'all compression. I don't need to shoot in 12K either, to be honest. I might even go down in 4K if I wanted to, to be real. <laughs> like, really depends on these foul sizes. But right now we should be cool. I got 310 minutes at 8K with a compression ratio of 12 to one. So I'm not gonna be filming that long though. That's, that's more than enough time. Um, so now let's move on to the lighting of the scene. So and just grab like a wide of this real quick just so they can see how is everything set up here. So this is the scene, right? This is the scene, it's looking really good. Uh, number one, shout out to my gaffer, Josh, cause he is the man when it comes to lighting. Um, we have, we're going back to the shower curtain. The shower curtain, it works. It works, that's all I got for you, it works. I could use a soft box, but there's something about the shower curtain look that I like. It's, it's frosted, so the diffusion is very soft. The roll is gonna be very soft. Uh, I was gonna try to do a book light, but it was just, it was just too much, to be real with y'all. It was just way too much, too much work to do. Uh, we are also using the, shout out to Ceremonic. Ceremonic sent me this mic. We're using a Ceremonic V6 Soundbird instead of the Roll NTG today. I love this mic. I love this mic. It, it, it replaced my Rode NTG5 right now. I still use my NTG5, but this Theramonic is, I love it. I love the preamps on it. Here, we got Nanlite's new light, the Pavo Slim 120C. Uh, this is gonna be used as our hair light. I love this light just because of how flexible it is. It already has a built-in soft box, so it's very easy to set up and it's lightweight. Um, and everything is running in AC power right now. We have, what else we got? So we got Pavel Sun 120C. We have the 300B Mark II, as you can see, kind of creating a window pane along this wall here. We have a window here, kind of made it look like a, you know, the light is blasting there. Uh, and then we have Pavel Tubes 15Xs. This is just kind of light up the background. The background's falling like a little bit too much into the darkness. I didn't want to turn the overhead lights on just because it was going to be too, I need to control my lighting, right? It was going to be two spilling everywhere, so I'd rather just put some Pavel tubes up to make sure the background looks clean. And yeah, so uh, I'm gonna, you know, just kind of show you all just some more BTS of like how the interview set's gonna go up today. And here we go. <laughs>
right, so here we actually using a Rode Wireless Pro for this. Uh, I switched over, the DJI mic is pretty much, the DJI mic and the A7S3 is pretty much my new BTS setup. But for my professional setup, it's the Rode Pro because of this, a locking connection that is so important, especially for interviews. So this is the live pack we'll be using along with some time code stuff that the, the gaffer wanted to test out. But Rode Wireless Pro, pick it up. <laughs> Even though we have audio on everywhere on live packs with 32 bit and all that, I still like to run audio to a dedicated recorder just in case anything happens. It's only going to one source, not to the cameras. Anything happens to the camera, I still got the audio. Plus, I like running 32 bit flow on the Tascam X8. So, we got 32 bit flow on the Wireless Pro, 32 bit flow on the Tascam X8 as well. Now, one thing I did want to mention, something that you probably all noticed, as you can see, my whole team is wearing black. This is a requirement of mine when you're on my production set. It just makes us look more clean, more professional, even down to the BTS guy. So when you are on set and you are having a team, man, like, you know, if you don't have like, like a whole uniform, make your uniform. Like, if you want them to be in all black, then make sure that your team is all black. It just kind of just adds the professionalism of your sets. And then when people come in, they can kind of see that you are a team about business. All right, so right now, I just kind of wanted to give you all a breakdown on why I'm using the tools that I use on my production sets to make my stuff easier, right? So number one, I use Nanlite Lighting because of the app, the Nanlink app. Uh, I get to control all the lights that I'm using by just the click of a button. Uh, let me see if I got like a prime example of the 120C. So like right now, the 120C is on, but we can hit that and it'll turn right off. All right, so turn it back on. If I need to control the brightness, if I need to control the color, the hue, whatever I need to do, I'm able to do that through the Nanlink app. So I don't have to have my gaffer running back and forth, turning dials and all that. Like, we don't, you know, we, it's 2024, baby, you know what I'm saying? Get, step the weight up. So that's why I use all the Nanlink lighting. Now, as far as the cameras are concerned, I know some people don't consider Sony the FX line cinema cameras, but they are. Um, and just because one, autofocus, right? Now we have the Ursa 12K, but autofocus goes a long way, especially when you're trying to get like shallow depths of field. So both of these lenses that we're using are autofocus lenses. They're Sony lenses. So we got a 35 and 85, fantastic for autofocus and the FX30 for the downward angle. These are all great things that you want to use because if your subject moves in and out and you're using the manual focus lens, you're going to miss focus sometimes. However, when you don't have a focus puller on all three cameras, you need autofocus because autofocus is your first AC. That is your focus puller. So let's kind of get rid of that notion that real filmmakers don't use manual focus because a lot of y'all shots be blurry anyway. So now, the Ceramonic V6 Soundbird. I know people roll with, you know, roll all the time and I get it. However, there is some stiff competition out here and I love the Ceramonic V6 Soundbird and all the stuff that I'm talking about, I'll make sure I link it down in the description below. So yes, go pick it up because I get paid for that. Get a little kickback, helps, helps, <laughs> helps support the channel. Um, or become a member and I can just go ahead and get you some one-on-one -on -one coaching. But the Soundbird V6 is a phenomenal mic for interview setups, right? It is very, kind of giving like this bassy thing. Um, anything about child development, what their baby's milestones should be. Um, so, so those are our most common. Um. And to me, it just kind of always sound like, I don't know, professional. That sounds crazy, but that's just, that's just the facts of the matter. Um, again, I know some people kind of shy away from like this here because it may look like a certain way, but on camera, it looks fire. Like, a long, like I'm a firm believer in as long as it looks good, that's all that matters to me. So if it looks good, then that's what you should be using. Um, frosted material is definitely gonna give you a very soft roll off on your subject. 
And on top of that, it's not like a blaring bright light. So we, sometimes you have a soft box, huge, people gotta look at it and they get hot. You ain't gotta worry about that with this here. Lights all the way in the back and it's just filling this up to just make sure it's a very soft source. So uh, like I said, any of this stuff, I even tried to throw a shower curtain down in that description link from Target or something like, I'm gonna get my money from somebody. I decided to use the Ursa 12K for this shoot just because I wanted 8K. Um, do I, did I need 8K? No, I didn't, but I wanted it. So here we are. <laughs> and it was just nice to have like a quote unquote, a true cinema camera. And honestly, I will say this, this is my first time using like cinema glass of this nature. There is a difference. There is a difference between like quality cinema glass and like photography lenses. That's just, it is what it is. So I did like using the Vespa lenses. They were very nice to use. The, the, the roll off, the manual focus, like all of that. These are some phenomenal lenses. Like I, DZO, if y'all wanna send me a set, holla at your boy, I'll do a crazy review for y'all. But the DZO lenses are phenomenal. And so is the Ursa 12K. It started giving me a cinematic image and just very easy to control. Like I love Blackmagic cameras and it's a very easy seamless workflow because all these cameras are gonna be in 24P true 24p it should be very nice but uh man i appreciate y'all for watching hope y'all learned some stuff today this is the brooks media production set and uh, i'll catch you on the next one